Okay, this is the very last bit of the population's part of component one. And this bit looks at humans and their sort of impact on the nitrogen cycle. So, uh, in the video on the nitrogen cycle, I said that humans do various things to improve the nitrogen cycle for agriculture. So they use fertilizers and they're providing those additional uh, nitrates or ammonium ions into the nitrogen cycle to improve soil fertility, to improve crop yields. And we also mentioned drainage which reduces water logging and therefore reduces the uh, denitrification process and of course drainage if it reduces water logging like ploughing it will improve the aeration of the soil and so all of these things so these sort of agricultural practices are to improve nitrate availability <coughs> um, and therefore crop yields. Sadly, not all of this is good news. So there are a number of small meadow species. So some herbaceous meadow species. So some species grow best on nitrogen. I wouldn't say um, deficient really, on nitrogen poor soils. So some grasslands, so not grass itself, grass loves nitrogen. Um, but all the little small flowering things, you know, violas and all, all the you know, pretty little flowers, orchids uh, typically that grow best on nitrogen poor soils. So if you improve the nitrogen availability on uh, the pasture land perhaps, then you're actually really going to reduce the numbers of these. So their numbers go down and of course you should be aware of the ways of measuring that and probably realistically you're talking about uh, random sampling in areas where there have been nitrate fertilizers applied and areas that are managed to maintain uh, low fertility so for example if you want to grow a meadow in your garden you need to plant your meadow seeds but then you need to harvest the grass off the top and not put it back on so you need to keep the nitrogen content of your soil um, pretty poor. So what that means for species diversity is that of course that will be affected adversely so your species diversity falls. And of course that brings with it attendant worries about species disappearing. Um, digging drainage ditches, same thing, not only does it improve the sort of nitrogen availability but of course you're taking away water so plants that prefer to live somewhere where there's a lot more water are going to suffer as a result of that. And the one thing that you all know about nitrogen is this process of eutrophication. So all those nitrogen compounds, so nitrate, nitrite, ammonium, are all soluble in water. And that means that when it rains and, and the water table fills up, 
that they dissolve in rainwater. And as the rainwater um, drains away, those nutrients drain with it. And they drain into water courses. So, this brings two issues with it. First of all, you're losing the fertilisers that you're putting onto the uh, fields. And there are ways around that. You can have more slow-release fertilisers. Manure is a great example of that, uh, where it will release the uh, nitrogen content far more slowly. So therefore you lose less. Uh, there was a great question a couple of years ago where they in injected sludge and they spread the sludge on the, on the top. Um, and asked you what impact it had and how, how much of it washed away with the rain. So what happens when the nitrates and nitrites and ammonium get into the water courses is that they promote plant growth. So our first thing is, is that they promote plant growth. Which you think, well that's not too bad is it? But of course mainly we're talking algae, these small unicellular, technically, productists. And they form what's called an algal bloom. So the water goes all green and soupy, and the next sort of stage of that is that there's no light getting to the bottom and to the aquatic plants that are actually living under the water. So the next stage of that is that our aquatic plants die. Now, always a cheerful subject, but everything dead goes off to a decomposer. So the decomposers now have more food. So the decomposer population starts to rise and your decomposers use oxygen. They're aerobic in nature. So they start to use up a bit more oxygen. Now this isn't too much of an issue because of course you've got all those algae at the top and they're all churning out oxygen. So um, nothing to worry about there. Um, and the big problem comes of course when the algal bloom dies. So once the algal bloom dies then you start to have difficulties. So if you think in autumn the light intensity is going to drop as we lead into winter, light intensity is our main limiting factor. Those plants are no longer photosynthesizing and reproducing at the rate um, that they were. So they all tend to die off then. And of course your algal, po your decomposer population then has masses and masses and masses of food. So the decomposer population are using more oxygen. And you can imagine their population now is going to be growing exponentially. So this might relate to limiting factors, might relate to nitrogen cycle, it might relate to population growth. Because they're using up a lot of oxygen, we say that the, there is a high oxygen demand. We actually call that the biological, because these are biological organisms, oxygen demand, or BOD for short. What that does, it means that there's less oxygen in the water, for aquatic animals 
and don't forget that that's not just fish, although it does include fish, you've also got the invertebrates there. And what does that mean? The species diversity. Balls. So you think, yeah, fertilizers and drainage, great for the nitrogen cycle, nitrogen cycle great for crop yields, but you've got to remember the downsides. So this idea that you've got uh, species being outcompeted uh, just because they don't tolerate high nitrogen content very easily or outcompeted because the land's been drained, it's destroyed sort of more aquatic habitats like blanket bogs. And then you've got the eutrophication issue and all of those are going to cause a loss in species diversity. This is a bad thing.